let's look at menstruation. Menstruation is the shedding of the internal lining of the uterus, which is referred to as the endometrium. This process in female begins at puberty, which is also referred to as menarche and also stops finally at menopause. Menarche begins between the age of 11 to 14 in a young girl. What initiates it is the increase in the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone, which subsequently increased the release of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Let's use this image for this illustration. This is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is a region in the brain and it tends to produce gonadotropin releasing hormone, which may also be referred to as GnRH. And we have the pituitary gland located close to it. This is the pituitary gland which produces gonadotropins, which include follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. So the hypothalamus will initiate the pituitary gland to secrete FSH and LH. These are endocrine type of secretion. As soon as this secret is done, it is taken via the bloodstream to initiate the ovary. This is the ovary somewhere around here to begin to stimulate follicular growth so that follicles will begin to grow. And finally, there will be the production of a mature egg and that will be followed with ovulation. So after ovulation, the egg will be released into the lumen of the fallopian tube so that fertilization can take place. As these processes are going on, we have the uterus on the other side. This is the uterus. The uterus is lined by the endometrium. The endometrium is the most innermost layer of the uterus, and this is further subdivided into two sub-layers. We have the stratum functionalis, which is on top and is highlighted in blue. And deeper to it, we have the stratum basalis. And you have these two layers forming subdivisions of the endometrium lining of the uterus. If you look at the stratum basalis, you see that you have straight vessels. These are straight arteries that are aligned along its configuration. Where you see spiral artery that are coiled in the stratum functionalis. So the coiled artery is a continuation of the straight artery. It's just that when they get to this region, they are straightened. And when they move further to the stratum functionalis, they become coiled. This two configuration is what the endometrium lining of the uterus presents. And as ovulation occur, we say that the egg is prepared to be fertilized so that implantation can occur in the uterus. In the uterus, you have growth processes that are initiated so that there will be thickening of the wall of the endometrium so that the egg can perfectly be implanted into it. So also the vessels are also growing, they are becoming elongated so that this region will be richly supplied with blood. But in the absence of fertilization, it means that this growth will just be done for fun because the purpose that initiates this process is for implantation to take place. So if implantation fails to occur, there's going to be the shedding of this layer. And this layer is made up of two sub-layers, the basalis and the functionalis. It is the region of the stratum functionalis that becomes shed off during menstruation. And we already know that we have spiral artery within this region. So it is not just the tissue of the stratum functionalis, but also the spiral artery that will also be shed off along with it. And that is why you have bloody discharge. So this is the basic concept behind it. Let's go back to the root. We have the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus will produce gonadotropin releasing hormone, and the gonadotropin releasing hormone will initiate the pituitary gland to produce follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. They will go and target the ovary. When they get to the ovary, what they initiate is follicular development. The follicle stimulating hormone will stimulate the growth of the ovarian follicles that are located within the ovary, after which it's ovulation. After ovulation, this egg will be released into the uterine tube where fertilization will occur. But we have the remnants or like a shaft that is remained of the follicle after the egg have been released. And this is what you see. And this is called the corpus luteum. This corpus luteum is responsible for the production of hormone, which is called the progesterone that will stimulate the wall of the uterus to proliferate so that implantation can take place.
So the process of fertilization is a normal scenario that should occur, which means that after ovulation has occurred, the normal phenomenon is for fertilization to occur and also implantation to occur because the processes are already be laid down for these activities to be initiated. So it is in terms of the abnormal scientific alteration that occurs that tends to cause the bleeding that is referred to as menstruation. So after the release of the egg by the ovary, going through this image at the lower part, it gets here and meets with the sperm for fertilization to take place in the ampulla region. After the developing zygote, we move backwards and get implanted in the echeros. On getting to the echeros, we said the echeros does not also lie fallow. It begins to proliferate so as to increase in size and thickness so that there will be space for the blastocytes to be implanted on. So it is this thickening that is the structural basis for the bloody discharge. As we've explained before, that the endometrium lining is made up of two sublayers. We have the stratum basalis and the stratum functionalis. And within these two layers, we have arteries embedded. We already said that it is the stratum functionalis that gets shed off during menstruation. And of course, because it is not just tissue, it is also embedded with blood vessels. And that is why you see that there is a bloody discharge during the shedding of the endometrium. We said that this process is scientifically abnormal it is not supposed to be in this form because the normal scenario is for fertilization to occur after ovulation so that implantation can occur. But because of the abnormality that is seen in the process, that now leads to the shedding of blood. The menstrual cycle is a cycle of events that occur from the first day of menstruation to the first day of the next menstruation. This cycle tends to vary, but as an average of 28 days. Within the menstrual cycle, we have the ovarian cycle and we have the uterine cycle. The ovarian cycle as a subdivision of the menstrual cycle is a cycle of events that occur within the ovary, while the uterine cycle is also events that occur within the uterus. The events that occur within these two subcycles occur concurrently. So let's drive in into each of these cycles to see the activities that they present. For the ovarian cycle, the ovarian cycle can further be subdivided into two. We have the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle and we have the luteal phase. The follicular phase entails the time frame where folliculogenesis occurs. After this phase, as soon as we have the mature follicle, there's going to be ovulation. And after ovulation, the corpus luteum will also progressively develop. And as they develop, they are also involved in the production of hormone that has effect on the uterus for the thickening of the endometrial wall so that implantation can occur. So from this region down to this region where follicular growth is initiated is called the follicular phase. While after ovulation, we have the luteal phase, which is the development of the corpus luteum. Then the next cycle is the uterine cycle. Within the uterus, we also have concurrent events that occur, which includes the menstrual phase. And within this phase, we have the shedding of the endometrium. If you look at the thickness of the endometrium, it is tiniest at this region, which means that the shedding of the endometrium line is specifically the stratum functionalis. This will be followed after the sixth day to the 14th day, we have the proliferative phase. This proliferative phase is the phase that tends to enhance the regeneration of the stratum functionalis. Remember going back to this image of the endometrium lining of the uterus, the stratum functionalis is the region that is being shed off during menstruation. It means that this needs to reproliferate. So there's going to be regeneration of the stratum functionalis in the proliferative phase. And this is under the influence of estrogen that is secreted by the developing ovarian follicle. So during the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle, this ovary are also involved in the production of estrogen. Why this estrogen that is produced in the ovary, we have effect on the uterus. You can see that it is producing one organ, but its effect is on the other organ. So it will have effect on the uterus, thereby enhancing the proliferative phase of the endometrium lining of the uterus. So that after menstruation, the stratum functionalis will be regenerated under the influence of the estrogen that is secreted by the developing ovarian follicle. And also remember that in the stratum functionalis, we have spiral arteries. These spiral arteries also we tend to regenerate so as to prepare for the next phase. Then another event that does occur during this process 
is the secretion of cervical mucus. We have the service at this region, There's, but this secretion tends to be thin. And why it is thin is, is for it to allow sperm cell to drive through because at this phase, ovulation is about to occur so that they can fertilize the egg that will be released. From the 14th day to the end of the cycle, we have the secretory phase. What this phase does is that it enhances the growth of the spiral artery. This spiral artery is already regenerated, so it's going to lengthen it. They become longer during the secretory phase. And why they are so tagged secretory phase is because it is during this phase that the uterine glands become highly secretory secretes nutrient-rich fluid. So another activity that it does, because ovulation has occurred within this phase, and after ovulation, we know that fertilization would have occurred. So there's going to be the initiation of the cervical glands to secrete thick mucus, so as to prevent the passage of sperm cells. It's just in a way of controlling polyspamming, so that sperm cells will not be allowed to pass through the cervix and meet with the developing structure. And this phase also corresponds with the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle. We said that after ovulation, we have the development of corpus luteum. This corpus luteum will produce progesterone, and the progesterone will have effect on the endometrium lining of the uterus, whereby it helps to increase its proliferation. And that is why it is called the pregnancy hormone. It tends to prepare the uterus for implantation so that pregnancy can occur. After that, the corpus luteum will be transformed into corpus haldecan. It's not a secretory structure. And if it does not secrete hormone, what does that mean? It means that progesterone that is needed to sustain the development of the endometrium lining will not be available. And this means that there's going to be a degeneration of this growth because what is initiating it is not there. So there's going to be degeneration and this will now lead to the loss of the endometrium lining. And this phase will now continue as what is presented in the menstrual phase, which is the shedding of the endometrium. So that is how the cycle will continue from being menstrual phase to proliferative to secretory, then going back to menstrual phase. So that is what is presented. Clinical anatomy, let's look at endometriosis. Endometriosis, remember we talked about endometrial tissue. These are tissues that are formed by the endometrium lining of the uterus. When we begin to see this tissue outside the uterus, this is where it's supposed to be normally. But when you see it outside the uterus, it's called endometriosis. And they have high capacity to proliferate. The most likely cause is retrograde menstrual flow. When menstrual flow, passes through the fallopian tube, then become emptied outside the female reproductive system. Other causes could be genetic or maybe surgery. If you've had surgery done, it could alter the path by which this endometrial tissue move. Then the basic treatment is to use drug or surgery may be needed to remove this endometrial tissue as the case may be. Let's check our understanding of this lecture by explaining the structural basis behind menstruation. You can also describe the menstrual cycle and the events that occur within it. So thanks for watching this video. Let's meet in our next class.